Welcome to another edition of Greenbelt in Focus, a public affairs program produced by Greenbelt Access Television. If it's happening in Greenbelt, we'll put it into focus. In this edition, Conrad Hurling interviews Dr. Lois Rosado on Black History Month activities happening right here in Greenbelt. And now, our host, Conrad Hurling. Hi everybody, I'm Conrad Hurling with Greenbelt Access Television and with its program Greenbelt in Focus. And we are very privileged today to have Dr. Lois Rosado as our guest. And we're going to be talking about the Reparations Commission, of which she is a member of, and also with the History about Historical Research Historical Program. Research Program as well, a subcommittee of that commission. First of all, thanks so much for, for joining it's us. It's my pleasure. And it's going to be, I think, a pleasure for people and actually a learning experience that we're going to be talking about that the Reparations Commission is putting forth. On Saturday, February 24th, yes. over at the Greenbelt Library, between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., no registration is required, we're going to be having a couple of really important guests. And Lois, could you tell us who the guests are going to be? Oh, sure. That I'd be delighted to. <laughs> um, the program will feature Arturo Jackson, who is a historian for the Black History Program of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Right. <laughs> Mouthful. Yes. And our own Megan Searing Young, who is the director of the Greenbelt Museum. And basically, what are they going to be discussing? The two are going to discuss, well, there's several things. Mm -hmm. I think um, first I have to explain why we're doing this. Great. Because it is very important for the community to understand that we, the Reparations Commission, is responsible to you. So this is why we're doing this. Our goal, uh, the Reparations Commission's goal, according to the City uh, Council charge, right. is to determine if any historical uh, harms, or to find if any historical harms have been done to the African American and the Native American uh, communities of Greenbelt, and to make recommendations, just recommendations, right. uh, for reparative justice. The Historical Research Committee of the Commission mm -hmm. uh, has begun looking at the land that the city is was built on and exec and secondly about the populations that lived here and there's actually and that's going to be quite valuable because there is a shortage of knowledge about that so here the uh the committee is going to be providing information yes about yes that. there will be members of the committee present because we think it's very uh, important for our commission to ensure our community is provided with historical facts and in this case an overview of black history in upper prince george's county i think you're aware of that mm -hmm. during the 19th and 20th centuries and of course the founding of greenbelt and megan will talk about that from 1935 to the right. present we also the the commission members will be present to share updates um, and to um, respond to any inquiries or concerns that the community will have. Because without the community and their support, this commission is not right. going anywhere. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you know, um, in terms of Greenbelt's history, a lot of folks don't realize that, uh, I mean, Greenbelt obviously is an integrated city, but how that flow of integration works and doesn't work and how we can improve that mm -hmm. will be one of the things probably that comes out from the commission. But historically, what a lot of folks don't realize is that in order for the Greenbelt towns, because there were three of them, one outside of uh, Milwaukee in um, uh, Greendale and then in Green Hills, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati, and of course Greenbelt between Baltimore and Washington, but in order for the Roosevelt administration back in 35 to get approval for the funding to build these towns, they had to go with what the folks in control basically in Congress and a lot of the folks from some of the, the southern states um, said, okay, you can have this, you know, this 
incredible experiment, you know, uh, of a government town, but it can't be integrated. And so it was for many, many years that the housing in original Greenbelt was segregated. Mm -hmm. And it's only been, I think, since maybe the mid-60s or so, mm -hmm. and that's also be part of the history that yeah. we learn about, sure. that we've been a more integrated community. How do you feel about your experience, because it's been over a year now that you've been a member of the commission. What, what's your take so far? Um, well, it depends on a number of factors. We, we were not able to hire a facilitator, as you are aware, as right. you're now an alternate, right. uh, until I think we started with the facilitator in September, November. And so they're working with us, and there was a need, 21 people is yes. a lot of people to try and organize into a cohesive group. Right. So we're having um, meetings with the facilitators now, and so we hope that clear, identifiable goals and actions will come out of those meetings. What the Historical Research Committee, they have been working from the beginning. And I must, I must say that we have a remarkable person named Mark Miller, who is a, a, a retired librarian and has so much background in how to do this research mm -hmm. that we've been very fortunate in his uh, draft notes to date. I had the opportunity to go on a um, civil rights tour in October where I met the head of the Maryland Archives Oh, fantastic. Elaine Bachman. And what she, she said, absolutely, they want to work with us, they want to be part of us. So we have begun meeting with um, Chris Haley. Yes. And the other young lady is Hannah, who works directly with Elaine. So they're going to be helping us and guiding us in areas that we need to look at. So you have sort of two strands happening at the same time in the commission, but I think working with the facilitators will enable us to become a more cohesive group. Yeah, yeah, and it is interesting, um, you know, getting back, you know, into actually attending the commission meetings, because I had a, a period of time when I was on the council and right. therefore could not. And um, it is what you just described. It's a really expansive amount of information and learning about what possibly this information can tra how can that translate right. into action? Exactly. Um, exactly. We've got a number of other events, and you've been yes. a critical person in, in the Black History programs that are going on. What are, yes, what are some of the, um, the Greenbelt Black History and Culture Committee has worked with a number of groups in, in the city this time, which is really wonderful. So on the fourth, tomorrow actually, is the free health screening. And for folks that will be seeing this, so as we're going through this program, we're talking about it would be February uh, 10th, the February 10th. 10th. Tomorrow is February 10th. And there's the free health screenings over at the uh, Beltway Plaza. And from noon to 3, the, the artist of our time, Shamar, right. <laughs> will be hosting a collage art um, program with youth. And he's going to focus on the art of Romare Bearden. Oh, so that should be fun. And then on the 14th, the Golden Age Club is going to oh. have freed uh, the female reenactors of distinction at their meeting at 11 o'clock and it will be here in the community center room 201 I believe and then on February 18th from 2 to 4 we'll present a cultural program that's featuring a lot of youth from Greenbelt and um, different high schools so that that should be very very informative and fun it's going yeah. to be an entertaining yeah event and on Monday the 19th the Peace and Justice Coalition will show a film called Invented Before You Were Born and mm. it's going to tell the story of enslaved people who were actually freed given land and tools by their former enslaver so that should be a very interesting yeah. story to learn about and then if one wants to follow up uh, if you go to the, uh, a link that I believe you know, yes, the, uh, you can also... The Reparations Commission at greenbeltmd.gov. Gov, G-O-V for government. Right, right. right. 
Right. You yes, have got one another too. program, which is going to be the day before, actually the evening before our pro program. On the 24th. Of, of the, yes, and the, and you yes, have the Democratic Dennis. Club is yeah. putting together the director of Black History for the Maryland National Park and Planning Commission. And that's going to be on. Um, Dennis Dotson, Dr. Dennis Dotson. Exactly. And that's going to be Friday, the 23rd of the month at 7 o'clock over Greenbrier. at the Greenbrier Community Building. Okay. And he's going to be talking about the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. There are a lot of folks, unfortunately, who today were very much alive then that seem to have forgotten that. So it will be a good reminder for everyone uh, to do that and say, we've got to you know, keep this up. Yeah. So again, that's going to be Friday, February 23rd, 7 p.m. at the Greenbrier Community Building. And then again, the 24th. Saturday, the 24th from 2 to 4 at the Greenbelt Library in the auditorium. No registration required. And before we wrap up, yep. uh, I want to acknowledge the beautiful artwork of Lynn Poyer, who happens to be, very importantly, also the wife of John Campanil from Greenbelt Access TV, who is behind one of the cameras, and then the executive director, Sheila Tillert, is uh, behind another of the cameras. They actually took two cameras to film both of us. Isn't that something? And they did beautifully and anyway we have to acknowledge the efforts of Greenbelt Access TV as well in helping to get the word out to the entire community. And, and thanks everyone. Uh, thanks obviously and very clearly a uh, wonderful uh, person and a wonderful Greenbelter Dr. Lois Rosado for joining us. Thank you. And thanks to all of you in the Greenbelt community for sharing this time with you.